everybody that welcome back to Starkey Farmstead. So real quick, let's go over something about your worm bins. Are air wigs a problem for your worm bin? Let's find out. Did a little research. Papa Sandy and I just had a very long conversation about ear wigs. And I'm going to show you real quick right now in my worm bin, my ear wigs. All right. So when I pull my cardboard back, you're going to notice a couple of things. These are ear wigs, guys. Well, they just kind of went down. Let's see if I can pull some more out of here. So there's one. <laughs> well, you'll be still. So ear wigs have pinchers on their abdomen. You see that? Kind of towards their tail. They could possibly pinch you if you grab them and irritate them. They are not venomous, so you shouldn't need to worry about that. Will they eat your worms? From what I, all the information that I have found online and from what I've seen in my own beds, I do not believe that they will. Earwigs are actually pretty beneficial. They help to break down organic matter. So if you're somebody who puts bigger pieces of orga organic, like fruits and vegetables into your worm bins, larger pieces of leaves, like sometimes I don't bother to uh, run the lawnmower over them. I just throw them into my bed. What I have found is that earwigs will be attracted to that because they are composters in themselves. One of the ways that you can get rid of earwigs if you're having a problem in your worm bins is to take a container and place a lid on it. Poke holes with say a really big nail in the top of that container. Fill that container half of the way full with vegetable oil and add four teaspoons of soy sauce. Now that's gonna attract the earwigs into the container. Once they go through the holes on top that you have poked, they're gonna go in, they're gonna get into that oil because they're being attracted to the soy sauce and they're going to drown because they can't get back out. So that's just a good way to help get the earwigs out of your bin temporarily. But you still need to address the real issue here, guys. And that issue is going to be that somewhere in your bed, your material is just too large. Now, as we're looking through my bin, you're not going to see a ton of earwigs. You will see them. They are in here. I showed you that on the other side. I just don't have the problem. Oh, there my baby worms are. Yay. Hi, guys. It's a really big bin. Sometimes it can be very hard to find worms in this, unless I make a food pile. Um, what I'm learning is like my dad is having a tremendous issue with earwigs. He's like, Sam, they're all in my bed. They're everywhere. And I was like, okay, dad, so let's do some research. Why are the earwigs in your bed? The number one reason if you're watching this video, that you have an overabundance of earwigs in your worm bins, it's because the material that you're putting in there is not broken down enough for the worms to consume it quickly. And so the earwigs are attracted to that because they are composters and they wanna help the little red wigglers or the earthworms out. They're like, yo buddy, you have half a watermelon there. That's going to take you a few weeks to let us get in there and break that down for you. So my dad was like, hey, you know, Sam, that makes a lot of sense. And I'm like, yeah, dad, it does. He said, I used to blend all of my vegetables and fruits up in a blender, a bullet, bring it out there and dump it in like a slushy. And I never really had earwigs. I mean, I might see three or four when I pulled my top back on my bed. And I'm like, right, that's about what I see. I pull a piece of my cardboard right here back, I might see three or four dart off. Go to the other side over here on my bed, pull that back, three or four, that's it. But my dad literally has hundreds of them right now in his worm bin and he's like, whoa. And I'm like, well, you're actually putting a lot more peelings and like apple cores and banana peels and you're just laying it on top or tucking it under something like this, dad. And the worms being so little, they don't have a bit of trouble breaking it down quick enough. So you're gonna start getting things like pill bugs, earwigs. Now, something really cool about the earwig is also, 
A second reason they might be in your bed, you might have mites. You might have aphids coming in on some of the green materials that you're bringing in from outside because earwigs are known to eat those types of things. So they are beneficial. But if you're seeing in a bed this size, hundreds or thousands of earwigs, you're gonna to need to set that trap up I talked to you about. Start blending up your vegetables in a bullet and putting that food in here to give the worms a better chance to break it down quick enough to keep other natural composters from joining them in the bin. For the ones of you that have been watching our channel for a while, you know that I am a big, big believer in black soldier fly larvae as food for my chickens. But what happens when I transport manure from my rabbits into my worm bins and now I have black soldier flies in my bed? Is that gonna hurt? Actually, no, it is not. Now, black soldier fly larvae are big eaters and they need lots and lots of material to go through as they go through their life cycle. But they are not, again, like the earwig, going to bother my red wigglers. In fact, black soldier fly larvae waste products, how we call worm poop, vermicomposting, well, black soldier fly larvae poop is called FRASS, F-R-A-S-S. -S, and it has lots and lots of beneficial uses in your garden, full of microbiology, full of healthy bacteria. Now, frass is a little different than worm castings, AKA vermicompost. But guys, if they both are amazing soil amendments, imagine a worm bin where you have both being produced and the nutritional value and the nutrient content that that's gonna bring to that soil when I use it in my no-till organic regenerative market garden. So that's what I'm telling you. Know what's in your worm beds. Know what you're putting in there, guys. It's so important. And if you have mixed species, like sometimes I do, where I'll see earwigs, or I'll accidentally come across a whole pile of black soldier larvae just going insane, eating something. And I'm like, what? Then I could do my research, talk to my dad, Papa, Sammy, and Allie Bug. Check them out on YouTube, they're amazing. And then I realized, hey, wait a minute. This is a beneficial, sustainable, closed loop system that I didn't intentionally create. But obviously, God knows better than Sam does when it comes down to breaking down things like leaves, grass clippings, cardboard, paper, ground up vegetables, eggshells, all of that that sometimes those little red wigglers need a little bit of help from another species. So all three, earwigs, black soldier fly larvae, and red wigglers can be in the same bin together with no negative consequences. Isn't that amazing? And something that you probably didn't know because all of us are like, whoa, when we see something in our bins that we don't think should be there. So let me just help you Put those fears aside, guys. All three of those species have a very unique and important job to do in the decomposition of organic matter. You just want to make sure that one species, say your black soldier fly larvae or your earwigs, don't get so many of them that they outfeed and compete with your red wigglers because what that's going to cause is a reduction in your numbers of red wigglers, okay? Because there's not the right environment for them anymore. The other species are eating the food too quickly. Uh, they're causing the environment to be a little different maybe than what a red wiggler really prefers. So I hope this information really helps you get out there and check your red wiggler bins and realize that it's okay to come across other species inside that bin. All you need to do is a little bit adjustment because if there's a problem, I promise you, there is also a solution. Please make sure you put your red wiggler, or if you'd like to, put you an insect in the comments so I know that you actually watched this part.
All right, so here's a really good example of the early stages in a black soldier fly larvae's life. You see all those wiggling guys? Those are not tapeworms. Those are not any kind of grub or any of that. They are black soldier fly larvae that are just hatching in rabbit manure. So you guys have a blessed day. If you have not liked, commented, and subscribed, today I'd like you to comment a little worm in the comments so that I know you actually watched the video. And guys, it helps to push up and drive views so that other people can learn this information too through the YouTube algorithm. So here at Storky Formstead, we're all about sharing knowledge freely. We want you to know everything we're doing. We're trying to be as transparent as possible. So if you guys have not joined us, we're asking that you join with us and row in our boat and give us the chance to row in yours. So you guys have a blessed day. May everything that your hands touch prosper and multiply. Thank you for watching.